right, hello and welcome everybody to a new season of Musings. We're going to do, uh, well, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. I still need to go back and organize a lot of my stuff. But this is the world when login issues strike. It's a very nice world. I'm actually really loving this uh, this map section. If you look at it, we're in the southeast-ish, well, basically eastern part of it. There's a pretty vast jungle and actually pointing towards the lake right now where, well, actually, let's go, let's go check it out. This is just the satellite village area. We got a mine shaft starting. Um, this is where I'll be coming to trade and get experience in emeralds. But now we have to break it off because like, like these seasons keep getting so big and cumbersome that I want to break them up into more bite-sized seasons. But the biggest reason for the season is I'm going to try to organize all of what I've been working on these past, well, just a couple years. I've only had this PS5 for a year and some change. I got it for uh, two Christmases ago for the family, my kiddos and myself. Um, and today marks the first day with the new, new controller. That's w <laughs> my biggest complaint with PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5 is the controllers are way too complex. They're great. In fact, there's even an Astro's Playroom game, which um, <laughs> I have a video up of me playing, and I have a video up of my daughter playing, but they're not allowed to have YouTube accounts just yet, so there's no mic, no interaction. Um, their mom and I, my co-parent, we're not together, but we are a team, and my co-parent and I are going to decide when it is okay. I mean, my opinion is they're good now. I mean, yeah. So, without giving out too much information, like, they're not quite middle school age. We'll just put it that way. So, and I believe middle school... You should have a phone. Like, I had a flip phone, and I was up in Buena Vista with, uh, my family was lower to middle class. I mean, we didn't really have a lot going on. Oh, jeez. Okay. You gonna trample the crops? Okay. Anyways, I have a chicken farm up there, so that's where all the chickens should be. In fact, we can even go the back way. Um, but anyways, now, this season is going to be where we actually get some stuff done. We're still in the planning stage for a lot of my side projects, but... Yeah, see, there's the chicken farm. In fact, let's go ahead and make some more chickens. It's very cramped in here because originally it was just this little spot. I don't see any right now, but usually there's a bunch of ocelots there because apparently they eat chickens, which that's what these are. They look like ducks because they have the city texture pack. Um, amazing texture pack. I love it. Um... And I've just found I've had more success getting little baby chickens if you hit them with the eggs. It seems messed up, but, you know, I think it's the soft landing of it. Which, I want to say, nope. Well, what we could do, actually, let's go ahead and fix that. Since I, my theory is it's a soft landing, and regardless of if it is or not, we can do something a little more humane, or a little more kind to the animals, even though they're just digital representations. The scalable way to treat all sorts of things is be kind. I mean, you'll, you'll notice even in here, like, I'll end up apologizing to animals and stuff or whatever. But, oh, wait, we're looking for wool. So, anyways, yeah, and this, and I'm actually, this is a before work stream, or video. We had quite the snow day here in northern Colorado. There we go. Wool is a soft block. I imagine, oh, wait, I already had a. <laughs> okay. Anyways, so if we put some wool in there, also I'm trying to oxidize these copper things, so that's why I left them out. You can use honey to protect them to keep that uh, copper color, but I kind of like the rustic oxidized green look. So we're going to use those to build something. And we're going to do some altars for my past friends, people that didn't make it so far, which is kind of sad, but... And I almost teared up, uh... I'm normally not very emotional, but like... And not, not to be tough guy or anything, it's just I'm able to rationalize quite a bit. But, and we all are too. There's no special thing about me. Um, it's just humanity and human nature, which is important to explore. Alright, there we go. There we go. We'll throw them. There was one versus, let's see. Okay, just one out of them. Alright, either way, it's not worth it. Worst case, we can just come in with a bunch of seeds and get more chickens than we need, so we don't need to be cruel to them. Except for when they escape. Oh, you're a little one. <sighs> okay, you know what? This is how you get them in. Then you switch. 
Ultra. Oh my gosh. We're really struggling with this. Alright, come on, everyone. Come on. Back up here. That's right. Okay, now... I think there's probably still one down here. Oh, no, maybe they all went in there. Anyways, so we're working on a f I'm working on a few side projects. One of my favorite is teaching computer science. I love, and again, this is a totally humanistic trait that as soon as someone learns how to do something and they notice someone doesn't know how to do it, they're very quick to try to explain and help that person try to do it. And it's human nature at its finest. And there's a few things, there's barriers to humanity being decent. And that's what we need to address in the world. Greed, it basically comes down to the seven deadly sins in Christianity, which I was talking with someone the other day that she's, um, she practices Islam and has been doing, uh, it's, it's Ramadan right now, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know. And it's a month of observance and sacrifice, very similar to Lent from what I understand. But you give up, well, you fast during the day. You don't eat, you don't drink, which I, I couldn't give up water. Like I would at least have to have water. But that way it allows you to see what it's like for people that don't have food and water. Mm. Which is a very noble you know, idea. Let's see, what are we doing in the background? Let's go ahead and deposit all this flotsam at our villager outposts and <clears throat> and I'll keep working on the mine shaft while we talk about this. But basically, and Christians and Catholicism, which are very similar but yet still kind of different, they have what is known as Lent. And Lent is 40 days of sacrifice to where you give up something for Lent. You give up something that you like, something that brings you joy. Um, but usually it's just like soda or you give up candy or you give up movies or, you know, something. Video games? Oh my gosh, I couldn't give up video games for a whole 40 days. But but that's the thing. Is like now we have, oh, and a very similar intentions. Like they want to show what self-sacrifice looks like. Um, you know, appreciate the things that you have. And then once you get done with Lend, it's like, oh, yay. Um, you could reach a similar effect by roughing it in the woods or, you know, I had, um, a f well, it was actually one of my teachers. It was a colleague of my parents, but he was the prison reintegration specialist for Buena Vista Department of Corrections. And one time he tried it out to see what it was like to come back from being in prison. So he, d he gave himself all the same stuff that inmates get once they le get ready to leave prison. We can even have like huh, a lot of... No, no, let's get rid of that. Anyways, we have plenty of storage. We can actually make a storage house or storage room if we, if, oops, if we need. Oh, I love this controller. And I got a black one. I had two of the white ones before this. One that came with the system and then the other one. I think it was because I screwed it up by poking a pin or a paper clip into the pinhole trying to fix it, just fiddling with it without reading the manual, without reading the guides. Um, so anyway, so I have two, two controllers that don't work. One has a horrible drift, and the other one just turns off randomly. Like, I think I destroyed the battery or something, but anyway, from too many times poking it with the, the paper clip. So we're going to be gentle with this. Like I said, I've only had this PlayStation for a little over a year. So a year and three months now. Going on four. So I guess still it's pretty bad. I've got a PlayStation 4 that I've had since my college days. I graduated back in 2016 and actually my buddy um, okay so let me roll back a little even further. I was dating this girl that needed money and so she sold me her PS3 for really cheap and I kind of feel bad about it now like and I don't know I don't know what the whole story was. It could have even been like a, a ploy to keep me around or something and like which makes me feel even worse like those kind of things where you're a bro chat and you don't intend to be and you know, I was a football player all through high school, and I, I ran track, but I was also quite a nerd too. I was, you know, very worried about getting my homework in. I had great grades because I didn't dare not do it, not because my parents were any way or anything. It was just I didn't like the feeling of getting less than an A on something. Of course, if I did, I'd just be like, meh, you know. But if it was a C, I'd be like, oof, I really got to focus and you know fix that. So, ooh, actually, let's make a sheep farm. Let us make a sheep farm. So, anyways, um, but I've done some very bro chattish things, and I'm embarrassed to say that. Like, I, you know, I was raised by my mother. I thought I respected women quite a bit, but then it turns out that, you know, so, which is important, just being able to self-analyze. Um, so, in this season, we're going to go over all of the different things, the ways that we can help each other as humans, as people. 
And it's actually very fortunate because now I work for a study abroad office and I travel the world. I flew literally around the world twice last year. Or no, since I've been with this company, I guess. So I've only been here for, it'll be two years coming up in August. And I've already literally flown around the world twice. It's, it's beautiful. So, oh, also I need a ladder and then I can build this. So let's get some sticks, just make sure we have them. That's why I love just having a bamboo patch right next to us. Go ahead and do that. Make that into sticks. And then make that into ladders. And then the trick with the ladders is you can make a pit. Oh, and also, we kind of need trapdoors. So we're going to make jungle trapdoors so nobody gets in there, which I think the sheep are okay. Like, I don't think they're in danger, but you never know. I didn't realize the ocelots would eat the chickens, and until I put a lid on the chicken farm that I had, the ocelots were just killing all the chickens all the time. So, anyways, let's hope that these three sheep are still here. And they might have despawned. That's okay. We'll at least get some sheep. And we'll start a sheep farm. Because I do want wool. Oh, and I moved a lot of the flowers. I, it looks like I missed these. But um, there's a beehive over on this side. See down there. And I just moved a ton of flowers over there. Right next to that tree. So those bees could have a nice happy... Oh yeah, there's no drift on this controller. It's a brand new controller. And 80 bucks too. Sheesh. And I got the two year warranty. That's one thing that really bothered me. It was like, I finally figured out which number they wanted when I was doing the, because I was doing the PlayStation troubleshooting through the app and they do have a lot of documents to help that seem pretty straightforward. And I think if I would have just done that in the first place without basically shorting out my controller by poking it so many times, because it got to the point where like, whenever the controller would have a problem, and I even taught my kids this too. I was just like, yeah, there's the paper clip. Just poke it in the hole, you know, and then, and I can just see like people that work at PlayStation just cringing. Like, why would you do that? Read the instructions. Ugh. Who's got time for instructions or maps or directions or, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that is a, it's a common joke, especially about men, but really all humans are susceptible to it is that we just feel like we don't have the time to sit there and actually do it properly, you know, and do it right the first time which and I can say it all the times all right well, let's make a cow farm for now we've got two cows oh look at that already you can see that I'm gonna make giant skyscrapers in the middle of the jungle like an emerald city that's gonna be nice and so far that's just lime glass wait do we have both of you nope we lost one so because we're gonna need a lot of books and that's what I've been doing is writing my ideas down in books because I got a lot of great ideas, so does everybody, like, and, but it's a matter of acting on it, like, okay, great, you know, and there's that old saying, like, the pathway to hell is paved with good intentions, and shocker, like, Islam has very similar concepts, they've got a devil, they've got, oh, that's something else I'll be doing, is I'm going to be reading religious books, just so I can see, because I've had enough of, I've had a lot of, like, what other people tell me about stuff, but I kind of want to see. And then I'm going to interpret what I find and communicate that to you all in a nice, easy, succinct way. Because in a nutshell, from my experiences so far, what I think of religion is, and all religion, this goes for all religion, is a, a way for humans to try to explain, and people, sorry, I say human a lot too, because man really should refer to human. That's why we have an accidental patriarchy is because it's my opinion that I, I feel like that's how they meant it, was man was created in God's image. And I was raised uh, Methodist, so I have a lot more experience with Christianity and w a lot more confusion and anger because of my experience with Christianity. And a lot of people feel that way, and that's why you get a lot of like like really staunch or like really outspoken atheists. They're just like, no, they didn't have all the answers, and in fact they're holding back humanity's progress because of superstitions and boogeymen, basically. And instead of, you know, and it's accidentally letting people suffer. So, and again, people at their core are not evil. People do not enjoy seeing people suffer. Unless they have some pretty messed up things going on in their life. But then at the end of the day, like at some point, they're going to feel regret or remorse about that. They'll be like, you know what? I did go a little far or something like that. It's just human nature. We are designed biologically and psychologically. Like our brains and our bodies are designed for survival 
Like, whoever or whatever made us has a very intelligent design. I don't attribute it to God in the sense of the Bible. Like, there's some guy in shiny white robes that, you know, just happens to be sitting around checking in on you all day. No, I don't believe that. But, and it's kind of funny now, now that we do have technology so deeply ingrained in literally everything we do, that now we actually do have that. Like, we do have people watching you and making sure that you don't break the law. Like, And it's not like 1980 or George Orwell's, like, 1984 yet. Like, it's more of a, like, uh, if there's an issue, we'll take a look. We have the records, but nobody's got the time or the effort to really look into everybody's personal life. Um, and I say that as an IT system admin um, because... And that's true. IT usually has access, like full access to everything you do, your records, your address, your medical stuff, whatever. Like, I mean, they're not, they don't. Well, first off, they can't. I mean, especially when it comes to medical records. Like, I have access. If I wanted to, I could. But if I ever got caught doing that, it's a violation of HIPAA and I could lose my job. So right there, I have incentive to really not give a rip what your medical information says about you. I mean... That's your privacy. So, let's see, how do I want to do this? Oops. And that's how law enforcement is, too. I have a few friends in law enforcement at several different levels, and, you know, whenever we talk, we don't talk a lot. I mean, a lot of it's like hush hush and stuff, but at the same time, it's like, well, things like drinking and driving versus smoking and driving. Like, I'd, I'd wager just about every single cop out there that does traffic stops would much rather have a stoned driver than a drunk driver. I mean, really, yeah. ideally, they'd have a driver that's not impaired at all because it's that's the only legal way you're supposed to drive. Sorry, I want to make, like, more room because I always feel like I make these too cramped. See, again, these are just digital animals, but, I mean, you got to imagine that, you know, someone might see this and be like, why do you do this? Why do you... Is there something wrong with your brain? Why you mistreat, abuse animals that way? And I don't know. And I think even animal abuse is just a lack of understanding that animals do have feelings. I mean, oh, whoops. Okay, we'll let the bird out, but we got to have the ceiling back. So, anyways, misunderstandings, miscommunication, I swear, that's like 99.99% of all the problems in the world. Actually, let's go ahead and just do that. Okay, and then we'll just add another ladder, ladder there. Add another ladder there. There. Because as long as it's not the bottom one, animals won't go up it, and villagers, if they get stuck in here, they won't go up it. But, like, try not to get villagers stuck in here. I've had that problem a lot. All right, but anyways, I digress. Very random, as, as you'll find out quickly watching my videos. But basically what we need, what humanity needs to solve a lot of the world's problems is communication technology. And we need equal access for all people to be able to access this communication technology and feel heard and seen and respected. That's it. It's the respect. Now, it's not that people, again, people aren't out there like, hmm, I'm going to go disrespect someone someday. I mean, maybe if they've got a really bad situation going on in their life and they're not feeling well, and maybe they need to talk to somebody and work through some issues. And therapy needs to be much more wild, widely available. And I, I intend to include everything I've learned from my years. Like, I've had quite a bit of therapy throughout my lifetime. Not quite a bit, but, like, I've had some. I'm familiar with it. Uh, so, and I really think everybody should. And we're actually moving that way in this country to be more inclusive of mental health services with law enforcement. Because a lot of times, like cops, they're not trained to deal with someone who's having an, like, a, an emotional crisis. They just know that if this person is a danger to themselves or others, I'm going to detain them and put them in jail, which often adds more danger than it prevents, and we're finding that out. So then it's like, ooh. Like, uh, what was it recently? The, um, the, the uproar, the outrage of immigration is they're going to kill people. They're going to, all this, this crime is on your hands. This blood is on your hands. And I keep seeing, and mostly the X app, which is where I can kind of have a finger to the pulse of what people are saying from the quote-unquote other side. Um, and then I also have my friends, too. I talk to my friends from back home. My best friend is one of the biggest MAGA supporters. He loves Trump. And we talk all the time. I, I mean, we're just like, okay, why do you think this? Why do you think that? And the first thing we're both quick to say is, you know, I actually don't think that. I mean, like the, the LGBTQ. Like, I fully support people's adults' right to do what they want with their bodies, bodily autonomy and all that. But transgender kids, 
don't really support it. I mean, I support them if their parents are behind it and if they've had the counseling, if they've had the talk, and they realize, and I feel like they should also watch the South Park episode because as mean as it is, and that got me blocked by a couple of people, the Law Finn episode, it's, it's the truth. Like, until we actually get the science down correctly, you're only changing the cosmetics. You're not changing the biology. You won't be able to, you know, produce kids. And that's what some, a lot of people's concerns are about it, is you lose your ability to have kids. Like, it's not reversible, a lot of the stuff. Um, so if you ever do decide, like, you want someone to share your DNA, you know, a little mini you running around, you might not have that choice. So and that's why, and I already know that there are. Um, I forget, I got into a discussion with somebody and like, and I was reading an article, like the actual process for kids to start the transition surgery and, um, puberty blockers and all that. Like there, there is like a counseling component to it. They won't do it unless you've been coached properly by mental health professionals and doctors and, you know, they don't, they don't do it lightly. And so, and I think more people need to understand that and then there wouldn't be so much uproar about it. And unfortunately, um, adding that in there without that proper communication and clarification that, oh no, these people know what they're doing. This isn't some willy-nilly like, hey, I got drunk one night and I went and got a tattoo, which is a lot of people's stories. And that's why tattoo parlors, they can't give you a tattoo if you're impaired because it's a life decision that, you, you know, it just doesn't go away. It's a permanent um, attribute to your body now. Uh, and I've only got the one tattoo. I've got a giant Wu-Tang blast on my leg and I still, to this day... I love it. Like, it is, I love it. I don't want any more. And I'm very sensitive, like, literally, like, very ticklish and sensitive. So, like, when I was getting the tattoo, it hurt a lot, and it made me laugh a lot. And, of course, we were, I was drunk. My buddy was drunk that was giving it to me. And, like, we were just, <laughs> and I was, like, falling off the chair laughing. But then it was, like, it was, like, really painful and hurting. And it was, like, right on the bone for part of it. And I was just like, ah, yeah, I don't like it. And some people get really addicted to it. Just watching something on a YouTube video the other day about this guy that, he wanted to see what he looked like without tattoos, and he was covered head to toe, like face tattoos. Ugh, I don't, I don't, I don't care who you are. Like that's not gonna be the same you in like even a year from now or five years from now. Like, I mean, and even gangbangers, and, and that's the thing. Like gangs, they don't really give you a way out because of that FOMO, that fear of missing out. Like, wait, how is this person able to leave the gang and live a nice, happy life? where I'm still here in the dirt, so, and that's why there's a lot of inertia for people in gangs to, like, stay. And again, I have a lot of experience with people, not a lot, like, I'm not an expert, but I, I have a lot of family and friends that work in corrections. I have friends that have been in gangs, like, I mean, and just seen, had an inside look at, like, you know, like, the, at, at the core, they have good, or you can also watch South Central, too, to get a pretty good insight on the Crips, and how, like, originally they were to protect people against the cops, protect people against the war on drugs and protect against poverty like and it's been proven that black people in like places like new york were specifically targeted around the nixon time with crack cocaine to, to destabilize their communities now what they didn't understand is people are people and now we're at this nice like we're at a healthier point we're not come on get out of here go to bed can you find your way in <laughs> there you go all right but anyways and we're finally fixing that but same with hippies. The whole war on drugs was originally designed to quell any uprising against the war machine effort. That's what it was. Crack was introduced to the projects. Um, and also that's very susceptible to people in the lower to middle income tax brackets because people living closer to poverty, their life isn't that great. Their, their American dream is much more of a dream <clears throat> and much more important that they attain that dream. And so people are more susceptible to taking shortcuts that's just substance analysis 101 um, and the fact that we actually have alcohol is the real gateway drug and a lot of people don't realize that but yet we demonize marijuana or cannabis or whatever thinking that oh that's the gateway drug because you know it usually starts off with weed and, and it is kind of in a way because people realize how not dangerous weed is and they're like oh that's it I don't feel all that bad at all. I feel a little tired, a little groggy. Like, you don't even have to sleep it off. Like, you sober up within a few hours, and then you're like, huh. Like, you might be mildly tired and no no more dangerous operating heavy machinery than somebody that, say, maybe only got three or four hours of sleep because they aren't planning ahead properly. Or maybe they're too anxious and have too much anxiety going on, or their brain just won't stop. So then they have insomnia, and then they can't, 
you know, and all these omnias and anxieties and all these things, we need to understand that they're temporary, or at least potentially temporary, because that's another thing I've noticed is like once people get diagnosed with something, it's like a death sentence. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like having two arms or you, you lose an arm. Okay, now you only have one arm. Okay, are you depressed? Well, you're depressed for life. You're going to be depressed. We got to put you on these pills. We got to send you to counseling. And the pills can induce depression themselves. And that's one thing that Colorado is being the champion of is we legalized magic mushrooms, which have been proven, proven in scientific clinical studies and trials that they are way more, um, well, way more effective at treating depression, first of all but way safer they don't induce weight gain or possible ideas of suicide or whereas like depression meds they often induce weight gain and thoughts of suicide and they mess with your emotions and like and if you mismanage them then they're even more dangerous and more unpredictable and same with psychotropics for mental health issues like almost all psychiatrists if they decide to put you on meds the first thing they do is put you on lithium or some kind of balancer to get a quote-unquote clean palate but Mm. Mm. sorry my throat's getting dry and I only have coffee I, I forgot my water but anyways we're almost done with this episode then I gotta get to work but um anyways uh was I saying yeah psychotropics like like um lithium and olanzapine and all of that they can actually induce psychosis if mismanaged they can make you go crazy Literally, I had a psychiatrist tell me that, and I witnessed firsthand. I stopped taking psych meds, just cold turkey. I thought I was talking to the God, or to God, to the devil. I thought I was talking to angels. And which is really creepy, because with internet, the internet and communication technology and all this stuff, you really could be talking to literally anyone in the world that, that second. And normally in my day-to-day, -day, I usually talk to my old Saudi buddies from Saudi Arabia. They're back home at that part of the world. I have friends all over the Middle East and Asia and, like, um, but the biggest friends are in Saudi Arabia, and I talk to them pretty regularly. When it's their nighttime, it's our daytime. It's like you flip it 12 hours, then you roll back two or something like that. So they're really only like 10 hours ahead. But basically, the other side of the world. And at any moment's notice, I can talk to anyone. And so, But then it's like, okay, well, what if there really is a god that exists or a devil? Like It would be just as easy to communicate with any of them, and you would never know. Or even a government agency being nefarious or, or whatever the case may be, or even just somebody trolling. You know, it just seemed to the point where I was like, wow. And I was making, I was connecting more dots that weren't really there. I, there was a lot of correlation, but not real causation. Oh yeah, I was going to recycle these into bone meal. But, and anyways, and that's the thing, that's the scary thing. So even if there is, you know, some god pulling the strings or trying to like adjust some levers or whatever, like you just got to be careful. And that's why people are so cautious with religion, because you're giving a bunch of blind devotion to somebody that hasn't even been proven that, that they exist. Like, that's like, you know, this country started our, our independence on taxation without representation. We were mad that England kept just taking money from us, even though they paid for everything. Like, they put all this money up to have the colonies and have people come here. Then they're like, wait, now we need that money paid back. And it's like, no, we're our own country now. And, you know, and a lot of similar stuff is going on with Taiwan now. And they're, they're trying to get their independence. And Ukraine, like, they've got all this build up and everything. And... You know, the USSR, for wh whether it was good or bad, they did. They built up a lot of those European countries, or the Eastern European countries, and managed them. Whether they did a good job, that's debatable, but, and, you know, and then we didn't really have the fall of the USSR since Putin is still president for going on, what, 30, 40 years? And he's still the richest man in the world. Um, and that's, that's unfettered greed. That's where it's bottlenecked up so bad and it needs to be flowing to the people, but we're also almost to the point where money might not even be a thing. Like, if we get to the point where as long as you work, as long as you're being productive or doing something, then you'll have a comfortable life. If you're not being productive or doing something to help out humanity, then you're gonna struggle a little bit, and that's the truth. And really, alcohol is the biggest barrier to success. That's, it just is. Like, it's so easy to access. It's so widely socially acceptable, and there's so many problems that are tied to it. And then people just, you know, with hopes and prayers or thoughts and prayers are like, drink responsibly or try not to hurt yourself doing this. Easier said than done when your life is all, like, cruddy. And, you know, you see these movie stars that, you know, yeah, they got lucky or they did the thing. 
they got a ton of money and now they don't do squat except for complain and try to be political activists and or use their yachts to spell something out like you know uh anyways i just you can tell i have an opinion of that but anyways that's this episode so welcome to the beginning of the end no i'm just kidding the beginning of this season where we will try to start actually organizing all of these thoughts into charts diagrams google docs things that people can join discord groups like basically i'm going to try to organize an entire following and it's not just me i mean i like to keep stressing that anybody is capable of doing all this stuff and anybody should be and everybody wants to so we're going to try to facilitate that so we're going to get like i don't know twitch streaming youtubes discord like i said putting bugs in people's ears and making it to where it's a pull versus push so that's why Google Docs are important because then somebody can click a link and be like, oh, okay, I'm going to read up on this. And just a little bit, I mean, because a lot of people don't have time to sit and read a whole thing. But if you had it nice and easy, like, that's why I'm really sad Jamboards are going away. Because that was a really easy way. And I noticed I had some of that on my, my Python playlist for YouTube. But it was a very easy way for people that didn't like to read a lot, which is all of us, to be like, oh, okay, so these are the ideas. This is what's going on. And this is the point of it. So, anyways, I gotta get to work. So, ta ta. I will see you all later. Probably this afternoon. Now that I got a new controller, <laughs> I haven't played PlayStation for a couple of days and it drove me nuts. So, alright, ta ta for now, everybody. I will see you later.